This is Ryan Abraham, Dan Weber, uscfootball.com. Instant analysis here on Howard Jones Field. Wednesday practice, Dan, getting ready for Boston College. Team's going to leave after practice tomorrow, fly back east uh, to go to Boston. But a lot of special teams work today at practice. Yeah, I think they really want to, you know, see if they can get some kick returns in. Don't feel like they've, uh, you know, taken advantage much in the first two games. And so they're going to, you know, it worked last week. Their big emphasis last week was red zone defense, and that played out. So I think Sark's saying this week we're going to work on uh, – kick returns and uh, hope we get a few of them and uh, see what we can do. But uh, it was interesting. I know early you were seeing uh, Juju and uh, Justin Davis and uh, Adoree all kind of working on, you know, kickoff returns. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see if they put George Farmer back there as well. It just hasn't quite worked out. I mean, Nelson Aguilar is a great athlete and stuff. It's not like he can't do it, but his duties should be more on the offensive side of the ball probably. Yeah, and the punt return guy too. I mean, that's where your experience really matters. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, – You'd like to have a lot of kickoffs because that would, <laughs> would indicate, uh, you know, and maybe uh, uh, that's kickoff coverage. But uh, in, in a way, Sark said, you're not necessarily like to have a lot of kickoffs that you're returning. Yeah. Uh, but when you do get a chance to, you know, make something, uh, make something happen with it. Yeah, they haven't had many opportunities, obviously. 13 points against Fresno State, giving up only 10 against Stanford, you know, the, the half or the, the beginning of the game. So not too much there. And speaking of special teams, uh, Delvon Sibbins got a little extra credit today. Yeah, he got. Uh, they kept referencing in the uh, uh, in Sark scrum about his blocked field goal. Sark really wanted to make it clear that was an effort play, and he did get his uh, right thumb. Uh, they free fra free framed it and everything else, and uh, wasn't the only thing the Stanford stat people missed. I mean, this is the crew that had, uh, you know, uh, Joel Foy and uh, Grant Moore starting at offensive guard for USC. <laughs> so and missed guys that were in the game and all that. So that they missed a, a field goal block doesn't surprise us, but he, uh, they're correcting the stats now. And, uh, and, and I think Sark wanted to just totally emphasize that that was a, a, uh, an effort play, and that's what he wants out of guys like Delvon and Clyde Pilon is just give that kind of effort on every play. I got to see uh, Leonard Williams out here, and you did too. He had some ice on, uh, you know, on him a little bit, but what did you think about what he did? Limited, but it, he was out there. He's way better than he was at this time last week. Yeah, yeah he's way farther along. So uh, after last week, you know, I think it's smart. You don't need him running around out there, uh, you know, this week and uh, maybe pounding it a little bit. Uh, he put a lot of pressure on it in the game and survived. And uh, then you give him a little more, more time to heal this week. So it's not any kind of a lingering issue. But uh, it's one of those ones where you'd say, you know, if they had a game today, he would have played. And, then, you know, he's, he's fine. He had his... Uh, had his knee braces on, he had his pads on, so it wasn't like uh, last week when he clearly couldn't really practice. Uh, he was, he, he could have done it, 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 it just, they don't need him to. One last one for you, I know you got to talk to uh, safety Gerald Bowman a little bit, maybe kind of give some of his thoughts about this defense. Well, I just think a lot of what you talked to Gerald about, this is a kid that had to sit out two years, came out of the uh, city, uh, Philadelphia public schools, where in his senior year, he thinks only one other player in the entire city of Philadelphia public school system got a Division I scholarship. Wow. And he wasn't willing to not, he thought he was a Division I player. Now he was running back with 1,700 yards and he was at a school that had just had a football program for four years and nobody paid any attention to him at all. Went to a prep school that got you know, involved in a big scandal in North Carolina, got disbanded, sat out a couple of years and uh, some of his friends came to, you know, Pierce Junior College, came out to the West Coast, and he said, what the heck, let me give it a try. And darn if he doesn't, you know, get a USC offer. And uh, here he is, you know, 24 years old. Okay. Uh, going back home, uh, he's got 16, uh, we say home. I mean, I, I worked in Philadelphia. It's a long way from Philadelphia to Boston. <laughs> yeah. But when you're looking at it from here, it's kind of home. And he's yeah. going to have 16, uh, 16 tickets. and. Uh, for people from Philly that are going up to, to see him, and it's a, a real you know success story for uh, Gerald, who uh, you know keep, uh, Wilcox now you know says is the uh, probably been the, the single or no I guess it was Keith Hayward said that he was the uh, player of all the defensive backs who's done the best job, been the most consistent in the playbook. Just and Sark said the same thing. It's kind of contagious, the kind of senior leadership. You know he's had all kinds of you know injuries and illnesses and. You know, his dad, dad passed away and uh, a lot of, you know, things he's had to handle since he's been here. And he's come back this year and been what a real, you know, blessing to this team to have him here. All right, good stuff there from Dan Weber. This is Ryan Abraham. Check out uscfootball.com for more information.